welcome to the Elevator Expert. Today, I will be welcoming a brand new industry expert into the Meg Method Elevator, and we will have the length of their journey to try and elevate our understanding of their area of expertise. I have an open mindset, I'm focused, and I'm ready to learn. Let's find out who will be joining us in the Elevator today. Hi, it's Cathy McDonald from the wilds of Scotland. Delighted to be here. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Meg Method Elevator, Cathy McDonald. And Cathy is an expert in communication, the founder of the art of communication and a former hostage and crisis negotiator with Police Scotland. Cathy is a professional communicator who works with businesses, organizations, small groups and individuals to help them better communicate, connect and lead. So what an opportunity to have Cathy McDonald step into the Meg Method Elevator today. So welcome Cathy. How are you doing today? So much. I'm very well. Thank you very much. And yeah, you keep a very nice elevator. <laughs> Thank you. We, 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 we do try to keep nice and tidy here because we never know who's going to step in, Kathy, you yeah. see. So Kathy, the last expert we had in the Meg Method elevator was high performance coach Ben Coomber. And he wanted to pass on a little bit of advice to the next expert. And that advice was... As you continue to try and lead other people, make sure you continue to lead yourself. So I hope that bit of advice can be helpful to you in the new fu near future. But as I'm right here by the elevator control panel, please can I help you out, out Kathy, by selecting what floor are you going to today? Shall we go to floor 10? Yes. Okay. So floor 10. And today the audience and I are going to the top. So it looks like we'll be sharing the elevator with you, Kathy, for the next 10 minutes. And it's not every day that you get to share an elevator with a professional communicator. So I would love to make the most of the opportunity. Would you mind if we picked your brain about communication along the way, Kathy? It would be a pleasure. One way. <laughs> All right. So let me get the button for you. Floor 10. Here we go. So, Kathy, what does communication mean? Um, I guess there's dictionary definitions and things, but for me, it is simply the imparting, exchanging of information, being able to uh, understand each other. Mm. listen to each other for that understanding and um, being open to the idea that other people are, are different and have different perspectives. Yes. And what do you think is the biggest misconception when it comes to communication? Well, I think I support, I think it's George Bernard Shaw that's accredited with this quote and I support it wholeheartedly. Um, <laughs> the biggest flaw with communication is the misconception that it's actually happened. Mm. We feel we've communicated but actually we haven't. We've maybe spoken, but it's not landed the way we expected. So there we go. Very powerful. And how can individuals effectively communicate their needs in a health setting? So for example, speaking with a GP. Well, again, I suppose a bit like this elevator, you have a time to work with, don't you? Mm. Whether we like it or we don't, we have to accept that the GPs are time constrained. So um, actually preparation would be a thing. I know that it could be emotional, but emotion impacts on our communication. So preparing beforehand and knowing what do you want to say? What's the purpose of the conversation? What do you want them to understand about you, your situation, your feelings and work that out before you go in? Even if you don't feel that you're in a position to recite something, you know, you're not want to plan for this as if it's a job interview but even being able to write down a few things on a notepad to say this is the things that came to mind that I really didn't want to miss out of telling you today. The GP will be very good and very experienced in being able to shape the conversation into that time scale I, I would imagine but help them along the way um, w with your preparation. Mm, really great actionable advice there thank you. I think advocating for ourselves is a 
really important part of communication. Mm -hmm. And how do you handle high pressure situations and maintain a clear and level headed mindset? Um, well, I have many to re refer back to, I would imagine, on this one. Um, the big thing about high pressured situations um, is that emotion is at work. Mm. And emotion is actually an incredibly important element in every communication exchange. If I can think everyone who's, you know, ask everyone who is listening to think about a time where their emotion was nice and balanced and comfortable and maybe even right at this moment listening to the podcast, they're, uh, you know, they're listening, their ears are open to listen. Um, if they were in conversation, they'd be able to um, chat back and forward. And that's fabulous. But then add pressure, add time constraints, add difficult people. Uh, difficult situations and suddenly our feelings change and these feelings and that emotion is what impacts on communication. So when we're emotional our pace pitch and tone changes, our word choice changes, our non-verbal communication changes, our ability and our desire to listen absolutely changes for you know it's not as helpful you know, we might even we might be so emotional that we don't hear anything so that changes and also uh, the logical brain isn't free to fathom things out in the same way. So when it comes to communication within these situations, now for me, it might be a hostage situation or a firearm situation or, a, you know, some sort of crime situation. But for anyone listening, it could be anything. It could be um, a situation with teenagers at the house where, you know, you're having a, a bit of a, they've announced that they've got a commitment and you've only got 10 minutes to get them there. Or, you know, it could be at work where you've had a priority change. It could be anything. If emotion is working, then it's going to change your ability to communicate effectively. And therefore, what can you do to manage that emotion? Mm -hmm. So I think a few techniques that we would use is we practice we think about, OK, I could reasonably expect this situation to develop. How would I deal with that? What are the things I could say? How would I feel? How can I control that emotion? So that's if you can anticipate that you might encounter that situation. You, um, The more you're exposed to something, the more you become used to it. So the more your emotion you know, becomes your norm and your emotion balances out. Um, but you can also um, now and then have a situation where you could not have expected it and emotion gets the better. Give yourself space, even if it is saying to someone else, you know, this is a complete surprise to me. I, I think maybe you've had this in your mind for a while. This is a surprise. I need a few seconds just to think about this. And sometimes even giving yourself just 10 seconds is enough for you to regain your thoughts and compose uh, that emotion and then allow your communication to flow more effectively again. Mm, really helpful advice there. Thank you. I'm learning more and more how important emotion is and its connection to communication so thank you and should connection be the main purpose behind all communication with others we would work a lot on connection and if you think of it um again i'm conscious of our floors here so we'll I'll try and condense this <laughs> Um, there's a law of approach and avoid, isn't it? And that's the simplicity that we approach the things that we like in life and we avoid the things we don't. And it's the same with people and it's the same with conversations. And the really good conversations are the ones where we have connection. Just think of your best friend and how easy that communication is. Now think of maybe a relationship that hasn't worked and how communication just doesn't flow there anymore. Well, if communication is important to the business you run or the smooth running of your family, we have to find connection if we want to communicate. So finding a connection with somebody, even if we don't feel good about them at the moment, even if we've had a bit of a, a you know, a, a disagreement, being able to find a connection, that common ground is a platform you can both then use as a springboard to, you know, to, to discuss other things. You never have to agree with each other. You can always disagree. In fact, it's important that we're able to disagree with that dignity attached to it. But being able to communicate is massively important so that we can disagree with dignity. Um, so, yeah, the uh, communication is better when there's connection. The quicker and the better the connection, the more effective your communication will become. Yeah, and disagree with dignity. I love that. What is the best piece of communication advice you've ever received? If I go back to my childhood, my mum mm. was, if you don't have anything good to say, say nothing at all. Mm. Keep your mouth shut. What good will it bring? She also was very much think of others before yourself. 
And I think these were really good formative years advice. Professionally moving into the negotiation world, um, you're taught, but you're also highly encouraged to listen more than talk. Listening is your key to understanding other people and don't open your mouth until you have made an attempt to try and listen to someone else's perspective. Mm. Great words of wisdom from mum there. And yeah. what are some uh, strategies for l improving active listening in daily communication? So when it comes to effective communication, we believe we're listening, but sometimes we may not be. We'll uh, quite often we'll listen to respond rather than to listen understand. So an effective strategy to listen better is knowing what you're listening for. Mm -hmm. If you can know that when you listen to someone, you're the, we we hear about active listening and there's things called active listening skills that that um, your listeners may be aware of, and I separate what active listening is from them. Mm -hmm. And um, actively trying to understand the other perspective, the other person's perspective is where I'm going with this. Yeah. So a strategy is to know what you're listening for. If you know what you're listening for, then you've got more chance of hearing the things. So I would coach people to listen for three things. Number one, the information, the stuff, the times, the dates, the places, you know, the factual stuff that someone says. That's actually the least important, but it's the stuff we normally pick up quite readily and easily. Mm. The next one is paying attention to the emotion. What is the emotion we're hearing? Is it positive? Is it negative? Um, how are we going to respond to that? But also what's the intensity? Because the higher this person is emotionally, the less they're going to hear anything I have to say. So it's actually more important that this is a good time to listen. And then the last part is listening for the little clues that tell you what is really important to that person. The little throwaway remarks that someone mm. makes actually holds a lot of clues. So as far as a strategy for improving communication, listening in a conscious way is really helpful. You know, rather than just thinking active listening, actually think, what am I listening for? And when I'm listening for them, these things are more likely to pick up the clues that, that help me. And that's how you get to understand someone. Mm. how they feel, the, what's important to them, how they tick, um, as well as the factual stuff. And you can already tell by the, the other two things, how they feel and what's important to them is actually stuff we really, really need to pick up. The information in that we can capture another time. You know, it's it's the, the these other two things that are important. Yeah, and that's uh, hugely impactful. Thank you. And is there a quick way to find a common ground with, with others? Again, it's going to come back to listening. <laughs> <laughs> if um, if you can listen to someone, and, and part of it, remember, is that you're listening for the clues that tell you what's important to them. Mm -hmm. Every time we talk, especially if there's a little bit of emotion behind it, we will give clues of what I value, what I believe in, what I need and what I want. There are mm -hmm. clues there all the time. And if we can allow someone else to, to speak first. Sometimes we're overly keen to get our tuppence worth in first. We'll actually change that strategy, let the other person speak. When they speak, consciously think, well, what they've said, what are the things I agree with? What are the things that I can relate to? What are the things that I can, you know, I, I can connect on? And bring that in almost within the first thing that you say. So I might say, well, Meg, you know what, we, we are on different pages when it comes to you know, uh, this situation. But from what and from what you've said, I think we're, we both agree that we want the best for people. We both agree that it has to be done in a polite way. Um, and there's actually just a few things, you know, that separate us here. Can we, you know, I think what we agree on is a good basis to, to continue the discussion. Now, that actually felt a little bit clunky there because I'm thinking and talking at the same time. Mm. But you get the idea. Listen to understand. Listen for the clues as to what's important to the person. Pick out the things that you can relate to as well and then use that when you open the discussion to say, we actually agree, although we're disagreeing on the big thing, we actually agree on a lot of elements of it. And I think that's a good basis to start the discussion. Absolutely. And great advice to find a common ground. And I believe we have arrived. We are here at hey. floor 10, Kathy. And wow, I feel like my conversations will be forever changed. This was a very... <laughs> 
valuable elevator ride. So thank you so much for sharing all of your communication wisdom in such a short amount of time. You've given us some tools for life today, Kathy. And where can we find you in the future so we can hopefully support you in return? Um, it's very kind. Well, firstly, thank you very much for inviting me and being a very gracious and courteous um, I was going to say host, but lift host, <laughs> elevator, elevator host, host. <laughs> elevator host. Um, I mean, there's a chandelier in this elevator. This is just amazing. You do it well, so well. You know, all of our budget <laughs> is <laughs> on this elevator. <laughs> um, but I think um, a quick way to um, to connect to me, either through the social media sites. I am there. I have to say, hand on heart, I'm not as active on there as I should be, but I do connect on them. And I also have a website, the W's and then R of communication.co.uk so between these two sides of things you will find me amazing and we will definitely show you some support kathy and i'll leave those details on how in the podcast show notes uh, show notes as well and one last question before you leave kathy from mm-hmm. one expert to another i'd love mm-hmm. to know if you have one piece of advice to pass on to the next elevator expert i think i'm gonna adopt my mum's comments mm. here is the two things i know can i can I squeeze it to two yes, things she can. because she always said them in conjunction if you can't say something good about someone say nothing at all mm. hold on to it it'll get you nowhere it's no good to anyone and the next one is think of others before yourself and it's mm-hmm. an exceptionally good strategy in terms of effective communication Thank you. I think we can all benefit from that. But the next expert is in for a treat. Um, Yeah, amazing advice. Thank you so much, Kathy. You are a true professional and uh, floor 10 awaits. So let me get the door for you and have an incredible day, Kathy. Thank you so much. You are so welcome. What a privilege, Kathy McDonald, everybody. I feel like my communication skills will be improving tenfold. Uh, thank you so much for learning about communication with me today on The Elevator Expert. This has been The Meg Method Podcast. Please do check the show notes for more details on today's episode. And don't forget to keep enjoying the journey. It's only up from here. See you next time and big love.